Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer. It is the Monday of Holy Week, April 11th, 2022. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin from Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. OurShepherd.net is the way to find us. And I'm actually coming to you today, this morning, from Kohler, Wisconsin. So you see my mother-in-law's backyard behind me. Uh, Kohler is a beautiful, beautiful place. It's much more like a park that people live in than a neighborhood. And uh, you can hear the wind chimes going off, too. It's a little windy here, like it is in Michigan, too. Uh, but so thankful to be able to come to you from this beautiful place today. Uh, let's begin by God's grace alone. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First, we hear from Psalm 35. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and rise for my help. Draw the spear and javelin against my pursuers. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let them be put to shame and dishonor who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and disappointed who devise evil against me. Let them be like chaff in the wind. This is our fight against the forces of evil, against the forces of sin and darkness, the devil himself who seek to draw us into the, the eternal abyss of hell. And this is our, our Jesus, our Savior, who comes to us in the flesh and saves us from our own flesh, our own sin, by dying on the cross for us, as we will observe just coming up later on this week. And we're talking today about that incarnation, that a God taking on flesh, and what that means um, for those of us who are, who are made of this sinful flesh. This is from Hebrews chapter 2. Now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere. What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now, in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have the same source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death, he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it's not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Oh my gosh, this is a 10 sermon passage, <laughs> without a doubt. But of course, at its core is the whole understanding of God becoming flesh, the necessity for that and the beauty and the power of it, that we know that our Savior, who was without sin, was tempted this, the exact same way that we are tempted, that has been, been subjected to all the different horrible things of the world the same way we have, all the suffering, and frankly beyond for so many people. Um, there's nowhere near the suffering in this life that Jesus experienced in his, and yet, of course, without sin. I'll read a short section of the writing for today from Martin Chemnitz. Martin Chemnitz, who is often called the second Martin of the Reformation. And he wrote this, and it is the sweetest comfort that sin, which made its habitation in human flesh, was condemned in the same human flesh, in the person of Christ. Our body is the body of death, but in that same body of ours, which the Son of God assumed from us, 
death was again destroyed. Although our sins have separated us very far from God so that we might be alienated from the grace of God, from righteousness and life of God, yet the Son of God has brought very close to us those heavenly blessings which have been removed far from us, laying them before us through his incarnation in the flesh, which is of the same substance with our own, so that of his fullness we have received grace for grace. And there's more to that writing too, and I'll include that entire writing from Martin Chemnitz in the posting tonight, uh, tomorrow morning, Facebook and on YouTube as well. Uh, it's, a, it's especially appropriate as we approach uh, with Christ uh, the Last Supper, as we approach the scourging, as we approach his cross, that we understand completely and absolutely that he was fully human in every sense of the word, not protected by his supernatural powers in any way from all the suffering that he was about to endure. It's important for us to remember that he knew the exact time and the exact place of his suffering and his death, and he went there anyway, and he went there for us. Let's pray. Almighty God, grant that in the midst of our failures and our weaknesses, we may be restored through the passion and intercession of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray Luther's morning prayer as well. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and forever. Amen. So this week we'll have morning prayer on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, no morning prayer on Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday. Uh, but please come to church. Monday, Thursday is at 6.30. Uh, Good Friday is at 1 o'clock p.m. and 6.30 p.m. Saturday, 6 p.m. and then Sunday, Holy Sunday, Easter Sunday, the Day of Glory, 7, 9, and 11 a.m. All that's on our website as well, ourshepherd.net. Have a wonderful, wonderful day in the Lord.